We'll begin solving this question by looking at the graph for Apple 1 and trying to write down all of the known information that we can. Now we know that Apple 1 is dropped, so we can certainly say that the initial velocity of this Apple is 0 meters per second. We look on the time axis right over here and we can see at this point right here, if you kind of slide along the horizontal axis, you'll encounter a Y coordinate of zero. So this means that the final Y position of the apple is zero meters. It's basically hitting the ground. And it does so at a time equal to two seconds. We know this time over here is two seconds because the question states so right here. What we want to try to figure out is the initial Y coordinate of apple one. We might label that Y subscript zero. So we're going to, for now, say that that is an unknown quantity. Now, Apple 1 is in free fall, so we also know the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So now we just have to pick one of our equations from kinematics in order to solve for that initial y coordinate of Apple 1, and we're going to end up using this equation right here. And so we're going to go ahead and plug in all the known values that we just listed. And so the final y coordinate was 0 minus the initial y coordinate equals the initial velocity, which is 0 meters per second times the time, which we won't need to fill in there because that's going to zero out, plus 1 half multiplied by negative 9.8 meters per second squared multiplied by the time, which was 2 seconds squared. The left side becomes negative y subscript 0. On the other side, if we multiply this out, we will get negative 19.6 meters, and then divide both sides by negative 1, and you will get your initial y coordinate is positive 19.6 meters. So if we go back up to the graph, we can actually label that initial y coordinate right up here as 19.6 meters. So that's basically how high Apple 1 is dropped. We can now turn our attention to Apple 2, but before doing so, we actually want to figure out how much time is represented by each of these little increments right here. You'll notice there are eight increments leading up to the time of two seconds. And so since there's eight increments, we could find the value of each increment by dividing the two seconds by eight, which of course gives us a quarter of a second. So basically each of these little increments is a quarter of a second. That means that the time right here is going to be 2.25 seconds and that turns out to be very important for us because it's going to help us find the length of time that Apple II is falling. Let's continue examining the graph. Apple II begins its descent at this location right here and also at this time right here. So how many increments is that? It's one, two, three, four increments. We just said each one is a quarter of a second, so if you do a quarter of a second times four, you're going to get one second. So Apple II again begins its motion at one second, and it ends its motion at 2.25 seconds. So in fact, the time interval for Apple II would be 2.25 seconds minus the one second. And that's going to give us a total time span of 1.25 seconds. That is how long Apple II is in the air. This is going to turn out to be very important for us. So why don't we now list all of the quantities that we know or wish to know for Apple II. And so we'll kind of clear out all these and see what we can fill in. We'll leave the acceleration there, of course, because the Apple II is also in free fall. So it has the same acceleration of negative 9.8. We just figured out the time interval for Apple II. It's 1.25 seconds. Now, the initial Y coordinate, remember, Apple II starts its descent right up here. The initial Y coordinate is the 19.6 meters we found earlier. That is indeed why we found it. So that's 19.6 meters. And the final Y coordinate will be down here when Apple II hits the ground, so that will be zero meters. We don't know the initial velocity of Apple II. That's actually what we're looking for, so that becomes our unknown. Let's take a look at the same equation from one-dimensional kinematics. And so we have that equation written down below here. We'll plug in the known information, zero meters minus the initial position of 19.6 meters equals the unknown initial velocity multiplied by the time interval plus one half times the acceleration 
times the time interval squared. Don't forget to square that time interval. On your calculator, type all of that in at once, and you're going to get minus 7.65625. That should come out in terms of meters. And the other side is negative 19.6 meters. We'll add this 7.65625 meters to both sides. We'll cancel out on the right-hand side. You'll end up with about negative 11.9 meters here. And then finally, to solve for the initial velocity for Apple II, you'll divide both sides of the equation by 1.25 seconds. And when you do that, you will get an initial velocity of approximately negative 9.6 meters per second. But the question wanted the speed that Apple II was released with. So we actually just take the absolute value of this, and then we end up with positive 9.6 meters per second as the speed with which Apple II was thrown.